All right, gentlemen, the rules were given to you both earlier. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. And a look at James Quick Tillis. And he best hope that he is. Sheen stomach, actually. <laughs> Such a cynic. And we are set to go. And I think Tony Morrison will be all business here. And once again, this is quite a showcase for these young heavyweights. And I think all of them that we see tonight will not only try to win, but try to win in impressive fashion. I think they all feel they need to do that. These days, you're fighting as a marketer more than anything else in the heavyweight division. you got to make sure you are marketable. You have not seen Tommy Morrison before. He's a young man that has a tremendous left hook. It's gotten better and better as he's moved ahead in the pro, and there you see it again uh, to the body of Tillis. It's probably his big knockout weapon. Morrison able to work the body very well. Still trying to really to get himself back in, but good left hand down goes Tillis. I guess he does have a good left hook. Tillis shakes his head, says, I'm not sure I want a lot more of this. Doesn't appear to be hurt. Well, I think he's shocked that he got nailed with that punch. And a right hand gets there also. And incidentally, that was set up by a body shot. Another left hand. Tillis is in trouble. And this is a very small ring. There is nowhere for Tillis to go. It's about an 18-foot ring. Well, Tommy Morrison has come out blazing. And a good combination again by Morrison. A left and a left behind it. An uppercut and down goes Tillis. Very impressive. And Tillis is still in a heap of trouble, and as you see, still halfway to go in the first round. Ain't gonna take much, folks. Another left hand. I'll tell you what I like about Morrison here tonight is that he's been very patient. His accuracy is amazing with his punches. This is a very good effort by Morrison, even if we're wondering if Tillis is... Well, there it is. That's it. And that took two minutes and two seconds. Or hey. 52 seconds. My addition's never been very good. <laughs> but we get the point. Yes. They wanted that. James Quick Tillis. You know, and uh, the first one came courtesy of a very good left hook. He just didn't want to make me a liar when I said his left hook was so good. And there it is, sending James Tillis down. At this point, I don't think Tillis was as hurt as he as he would be now. Here's the second knockdown. And Morrison crunching him with the left hand and the straight right again. And the accuracy of the punches, there you see the uppercut, a good example. And there would be a third one. There would be a third knockdown, which would invoke the three knockdown rule. Morrison pursuing, and, and as you said, Barry, being very um, meticulous with his punches and economical as well. And that left hook did the, do, the job, and uh, the three knockdown rule ended this bout for Tommy Morrison, a superb win. Well, it really was. Morrison only threw 32 punches in the fight and landed with 20 of them. And I'll tell you, about 10 of those 20 really counted. It was big time. Let's make it official now with Michael Buffer. Mike? Referee Joe Cortez enforces the three knockdown rule. The official time, one minute, 51 seconds of the very first round. The winner by TKO, still undefeated now, 25 and 0, 21 KO, Tommy, the Duke, Morrison. So Tommy Morrison in a minute and 51 seconds officially is the winner and he will now take we've been talking about taking a big step forward and I really believe Al that he did that tonight. Well thank you Barry I am here with Tommy Morrison who is used to looking into this uh, lately the camera but boy you performed against James Quick Tillis I would think about as well as you would want to you can't have find anything that you didn't do right. Well we had the opportunity to view a lot of films on him uh, as everyone knows he's been around I mean I grew up watching him fight and uh, it uh, something that my new trainer, I credit that a lot to him. We felt more balance Tommy, uh, that tonight yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. than, we, than we have in the past. And uh, it's something things are starting to come together for us. And we're all really excited about it. Well, superb performance, Tommy. And I think what we're going to have a chance to do um, is take a look at things. But first of all, let me ask you this. The one thing you showed tonight here, which you've shown before, was a fantastic compact left hook. It's looking better and better. Well, it's something that we strive to, uh, you know, we, we strive perfection. Now uh, what we have to do is... Uh, uh, add to the rest, you know, add to our arsenal. I mean, uh, you know, the uppercuts, the right hands, a lot of people uh, come out looking for my left hook, and uh, we uh, kind of sabotage that a little bit tonight with uh, staying low and going to the body right off the bat. You did indeed, and uh, guess what? We're going to give you a chance to really look at your performance because right. we're going to show that first round in its entirety, and you're going to get a chance to comment a little bit, Tommy. It was uh, uh, from the get-go, you went right after him. Was that your plan? Well, I wanted to, uh, I expect him to come out 
and uh, try to take the fight right to me. Uh, I expect him also to uh, come out and try to fight. Also, as you notice, I go to the body quite often, and uh, that's that's uh, one of the things that a lot of heavyweights, uh, I think, forget about is the body. If you kill the body, the head will die too. So we tried to do that, and I felt that I was a little more relaxed tonight, which is something that you uh, you know that you have to depend on when you get to the into the bigger fights. How'd you set up this first left hook that nailed him? Well, I started coming to the body, and I, I noticed that uh, he didn't like the right light, as like you said right there. And uh, when I came to the body. His hand would come down, and I kind of lowered myself with the body and came up with a with a, with the left hook and, uh, and do uh, do the things. And so, <laughs> yeah, I guess you did. <laughs> now it, I wasn't sure he was. Were you sure he was really hurt after that first one? Well, he's got the uh, you know I've seen him get hurt before, and he always gets up. He's a very very game fighter. It's something that he does have is a lot of heart, and they showed that against us by everybody in the spot. And uh, fortunately for us, uh, we were able to capitalize on some of his mistakes and stay on him when we had him hurt and take him out. Of you landed 62% of your punches. You were very accurate. You were pretty careful with what you threw. I think so. We, we, uh, as I mentioned before, we had a lot of opportunity to watch uh, you know, some film on him, so we basically knew what, what he could do. We basically uh, trained for the Tyson, or for the, uh, the uh, quick kill of Bob Tyson, and not the, the, the quick kill of Bob Holyfield. Were you surprised? Now, he's not, he was in a little better shape than people had seen him in recent fights. Did you think his movement would be a little better, although he slowed that down right away? Well, I think it would be, but that's one of the main reasons he came out and uh, went right to the body. Uh, he did, you know, he, he was in shape. I mean, he did train for the fight, and uh, he's the type of fighter that, as I mentioned before, has to be motivated. And uh, certainly, uh, everybody that fights me from this point on is going to be like their title fight, and that, in return, is a good motivator for myself. Well, it must be. You know, since the movie, you're, you're moving up, and as you say, everybody would want to knock you off. That's probably, um, as you see, the end of the fight, that probably that makes you train a little harder as well. Very much so. I mean, we, we've got an exciting future, and uh, things are starting to, you know, to come together for us, and we're all really excited about it. Hopefully, if we keep uh, improving, uh, you know, the way we have, over the next, uh, you know, eight to 12 months, uh, we're looking to fight someone in the top 10. That's something we're real excited about also. All right, well, the man, the man that can answer that is Bill Caton. Bill, let, let me ask the question first. Give me a chance. <laughs> Bill Caton, your manager, what is next for Chet Tommy? What I wanted to say first is to give credit to Tommy Virgets, the new trainer who is really working beautifully with, uh, with Tommy. Our plans are, of course, to start moving up the scale. We're going to start taking more and more competition, and we hope to be in the top two or three by the end of the year. You, you were heartened, I'm sure, by what you saw. Did this show you uh, at, that Tommy is maybe farther along than you thought? No, he's just about where we thought he'd be with the new training. I've been getting reports, and he's just where he should be, and he'll be moving up month by month from here on. Right. Tommy, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you I'd like to say hello to everybody back in Oklahoma and everybody in Kansas City. All right. All right. Tommy Morrison with a win that can only be described as huge if for no other reason because he got it so quickly. Let's go down to Barry Tompkins at ringside. All right, thanks very much, Al, and to Tommy and Bill Caton, John Brown, everybody involved with the Tommy Morrison.